Who are the people attracted to the community of Jesus? Many are professionals, bright, wealthy, educated, some with Harvard and MIT degrees. Some joined after their pastor made the commitment and brought the whole congregation with him, others after a weekend retreat. There are single people and entire families whose children have known no other life. This is how we wanted to raise our children in a wholesome, um, I think just a wholesome atmosphere. And we felt that everyone here had the same goals in mind to try to live peacefully together and to live, you know, in a Christian, Christian way with each other. The community of Jesus sits on a prime piece of Cape Cod real estate. Roughly 240 adults and children are spread out in the compound's 22 privately owned homes. Another 90 men and women live in the convent and monastery. All the brothers and sisters have taken a vow of celibacy and poverty. We have a great uh, privilege here in the community that, that our brotherhood, for instance, is not tied to a tradition that might limit it. We really can move freely in whatever direction God is leading us. So we may have a mixture, as we do, of the Benedictines, of the Franciscans, of the Catholic Church, of the Rus Russian Orthodox Church. Several times a day, the brothers and sisters go to the chapel to pray. Virtually all other time is spent in daily chores. Chores former members say they toiled at 365 days a year. In fact, they charge, every day was so packed with obligations to the choir, the orchestra, their work, that there was not a single moment alone to think. If I didn't say where I was, I got in trouble. You know, if I was uh, five minutes late to going somewhere, or um, late to church, or uh, as a sister particularly, they knew where you had, you know, you had a schedule for every minute of the day. Suppose you went for a walk down by the beach. Could you do that? Not unless I went with another sister and I was at, told I could go for a walk. You, you know. had to get permission. Right. Just what is the greater mission of the community of Jesus? That's the question that troubled the Episcopal Diocese of Massachusetts when, in the 1970s, the community tried to affiliate with the Episcopal Church. The request was denied. Most religious orders are noted for their ministries uh, in poverty-stricken areas or with sick people or if they have a special vocation in healing. None of that was present in the community of Jesus. The moment we mentioned this group, the community of Jesus, you had a negative reaction. Why? Yeah, I mean, they, they are, in, in sort of the classic sense of the term, a cult. That is to say that they are inward-looking and revolve around a particular discipline and self-understanding that is not shared with people outside of the group. Lutheran pastor George Mather of Plymouth has counseled many former members. You see, people in the cults don't think they're in the cults. They think they're in uh, the group that God has raised up as an example to the world. I think uh, many families have been hurt, devastated, and to this day it probably still goes on.
This is Mary Richardson. Tomorrow night on Chronicle, what about the children? My daughter still has nightmares about the community of Jesus. Is the community a supportive environment or a place where children are separated from their families and disciplined harshly? And former members' frightening tales of escape. Are they believable? Part two of a Chronicle investigation, community or cult, tomorrow night.